In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert a time delta object to a float in both Python 2 and Python 3. We found this solution on Paul Michael Agapow's blog post at the URL shown here, and Paul Michael agreed to let us create this video based on it. Here's the problem. You have two dates, say June 1st, 2015 at 12.30 p.m. and June 7th, 2015 at 6.15 p.m. You want to know how many days after June 1st, 2015 at 12.30 p.m. is June 7th, 2015 at 6.15 p.m. So we can see by looking at it, it's, a, it's six days plus about six hours, five hours and 45 minutes. And five hours and 45 minutes is slightly less than a quarter of a day. So if we were to say that in days, it'd be some number slightly smaller than 6.25. So I've taken Paul Michael's solution and I brought it into IPython notebook. And the first thing we do is we import date time and time delta from the date time module. We set two variables d1 and d2 to our date times and you can see by looking at those that the year is 2015 for both, the month is 6 for both, that's June, the day is 1 for the first one and 7 for the second one and the hour is 12 for the first one, 18 or 6 p.m. for the second one and the minute is 30 for the first one and 15 for the second one. So we get our time delta by subtracting d1 from d2. And if we run this, we see that we get a date time dot time delta. That's six days and 20,700 seconds. So if we check the type of TD, which we've already seen, it's, it's a time delta object. And then we can check the days, seconds, and microseconds of our TD object. And you can see it's six days. 20,700 seconds and zero microseconds. So this is Python 3 and in Python 3 we can divide one time delta object by another time delta object. So this time delta days equals one is a time delta of one day. So if we take our TD that we just created, our time delta that we just created of six days plus 20,700 seconds and we divide it by a time delta that's just one day, we'll get 6.239, days. That's the time difference. So unfortunately in Python 2, you can't do this. You can't divide one time delta object by another. And so what you need to do is you need to do the math yourself. Time delta objects include a total seconds method. You can see that here, we'll show the line numbers. On line 7, TS gets TD.TotalSeconds. And when we print that, we print total seconds, it'll give us the number of seconds. So let's go ahead and do that. Notice in IPython notebook, we're running this in Python 2 using the script pi-2 on line 1. So we'll run this. And you can see the total seconds is 539,100. Okay. So... Let's find out how many seconds there are in a day. The way we do that is again, we take our time delta days equals one. That's a time delta of one day. And we get the total seconds on that. And if we print that, you can see there are 86,400 seconds in a day. So now let's add this last bit. Days gets TS. Remember, that's the number of seconds between our two date time objects divided by seconds in a day seconds in day. And we print that and you can see we get 6.298333. The same number we got in Python 3 by dividing one time delta by another. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks to Paul Michael for letting us use his post as a basis for this video. Check out his blog at the URL shown here.